There's nothing better on DF Direct Weekly than brand new, fresh spec leaks. We love spec leaks here on Digital Foundry, and Oliver McKenzie especially loves them. And this week, while we were away at Gamescom, we actually got some new ones regarding what's known as Valve Fremont Console. Um, and I want to start with a question here from P. Uh, do not believe his lies, but he does have a good question here. He says, Guten Tag, D or Fs. Dwarfs, I guess. What do you <laughs> think about the specs of Valve's Fremont console? CPU is compared to an i3 13 uh, what 13100F, and with that just rolls off the tongue. And with with an RX 7600, it could handle many current generation games at 60 frames per second, full HD 1080p, just like NBA 07 full HD 1080p on the PlayStation 3. And with uh, Steam OS users. Uh, might use the ported lossless scaling, which can do decent frame gen in some titles, such as Dragon's Dogma 2. Can't confirm, lossless scaling is excellent. Uh, maybe even FSR 4 might be possible. Will Valve manage to offer decent console alternatives to the PS5 and Xbox Series X if priced at, say, $599 or less? Oliver, what do you think about all this stuff? Yeah, so I'll get back to that question shortly here. Um, I do think we should run through the specs really quickly. Sure, so yeah, let, lay it yeah. out for us. Like like this uh, individual mentions, and like uh, Brad Lynch, a very prolific Valve leaker, has laid out on his Twitter account, his X account. It's basically a six-core Zen 4 CPU design coupled with what looks mm -hmm. like an RX 7600 with its own pool of VRAM. And then the main system RAM is DDR5, in this leak, there's only eight gigabytes of DDR5. I'd hope that would be at least 16 gigabytes in the shipping product, because <laughs> that's a very low number. Um, but this basically seems like some variant of the Steam machine kind of living room concept that we've had for you know nine or 10 years now in some form or another. Um, and this has had a couple of revisions, I think, in the recent past, but this one might actually be brought to market based on the fact this actually has a, has a legitimate Geekbench score and a lot of leaks behind it. Um, I'm not that offended by this spec, but it doesn't necessarily look too promising. Like you know, no RDNA 4 means no FSR 4, at least for now, right? Unless they backport it to RDNA 3, and then you'd have some question about its, uh, about its performance on what is fairly low spec RDNA 3 hardware. Um, and this GPU in particular, it's like probably weaker than a PS5 GPU or a, or a Series X GPU, right? In raster performance, it should not be, should not be faster than those GPUs, certainly. Um, I do like the idea of this device. There are some questions about it, but go, to go back to this person's question, I think at like $599, it would be reasonable. I wouldn't necessarily position it against the consoles because I always think that's gonna be a losing game when we're talking about kind of corresponding PC hardware. I think you'd kind of be lucky if this was in that, you know, 599 range, maybe a little bit higher potentially. Um, obviously this has a lot more flexibility than a console when it comes to actually playing a very large variety of like Steam software, of PC software going back some ages. There's also some leaks of potentially a new Steam Deck, Steam uh, controller, I should say, um, for this device as well, with kind of the dual trackpads and the thumbsticks and all that good stuff. It's kind of an evolution of the original Steam controller that Valve launched uh, many years ago again. So I think this is potentially an interesting device um, in terms of competing against the consoles, I'm not sure it's necessarily there, but there are also some other questions that I, I would have, like I, I'd be interested in a device that was a little bit higher spec than this, but I'm also yeah. not sure what the state of like RT acceleration is under Proton at the moment. Um, last time I checked, there was a significant performance penalty, it seemed like. So right. would a higher spec device be viable under Proton? I know they have FSR4 running under Proton just fine now, but could you actually get that full spec of what people are expecting out of like a 9700 or rather 9070 XT kind of class GPU potentially right. in a device like this, I'm not so sure. So maybe this is just the right vehicle for what Valve's tech stack looks like at this time, getting it into the living room, low price, maybe that's a good device. And for the time being, you know, Microsoft does not have a competing kind of OS offering and won't until 2026 probably, right? So this is all Valve's territory for now. If they want to compete in this space, they have a good OS offering. They might have a good hardware offering. It just might not be like the top of the line necessarily. Exactly. And that's um, that's an interesting point though, because I have actually, I have my Steam Deck hooked up on a dock that's connected to the TV. It replaced my Switch 1 in my setup. And it just reminded me how good Steam OS is as a TV interface. It makes accessing PC games through a gamepad far easier. Uh, it handles things 
that Windows should handle more seamlessly, such as scaling. Right. You have a 720p or 1080p game, you can nearest neighbor scale that all the way up to 4K. It looks super sharp. You know, you have this extra flexibility uh, that the SteamOS can provide, which is something that, you know, coming from the Microsoft stuff that also made me think about this, right? Like just being able to cap frame rates, get perfect frame pacing. There's all these features that SteamOS does that we've not seen anything from the, the Microsoft side doing. And I'd be curious if they expose it for Xbox, but a box like this or something better in that sense actually sounds kind of appealing now just because they've they've really laid the groundwork for an awesome TV experience right. in a way that they didn't uh, back when we first started talking about like Steam boxes, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't know, Alex, what do you think? Is, is this a product that you'd look at and be like, yeah, I'm, I'm into this as like maybe a secondary, let's say you had like a second room that had a nice screen, you occasionally wanted to relax in there and play some PC games. What do, what do you think of this whole thing? I mean, the the idea is intriguing for people who would want to use it. I think as a as a ready made PC, a lot of people are buying pre built. True, and the mm -hmm. especially if you're limiting yourself to free to play titles that don't have you know you know kernel level anti cheat. I think <laughs> this could be a <laughs> a viable product for those people because they're not going to be using those things and fsr is a you know those people are like you know they don't care about that kind of stuff and if it has a competitive price it could be a great entry level pc for those style of games but as soon as you get into like the larger triple a area like alro was talking about i don't think we've seen steam os proven with a high level spec no. to see if you're going to get that scaling you really want always and the expected performance vis-a-vis -vis what how it would be on windows or vis-a-vis uh, -vis what you'd be getting from a potential console purchase mm -hmm. um so i think there we still need a little proof but i would like to see it and test it and then start talking about this as because i think for the pressure that it would put on microsoft would be great and the pressure and what it would add maybe to the ecosystem because if they have their own set of features well then it can inspire others to add those features to things like windows or just true. offer an alternative at that point if you don't want to use windows anymore which i totally get uh so yep. yeah i would like to see this actually come out uh though i'm a little bit doubtful about that gpu um, yeah that's not great yeah yeah and it's only yeah. eight gigs as well right at least the oh, retail yeah. configuration so <laughs> yeah so yeah. Um, that's that's the thing right like a handheld like the steam deck you expect like a lot of like considerations made in terms of battery life performance size but when you're dealing with a box like this you, you kind of hope for a little bit more mm -hmm. i feel Right. The expectation course, shoots up and then you're looking yeah, at does, other consoles and yeah, all kinds of things. You think it can compete with the uh, quote unquote aging consoles, Oliver? <laughs> people, people got mad at me for, for seeing that in the, in the Mafia video. They um, were very mad about that. People did get mad about that. I mean, they are objectively aging. <laughs> they are. Yeah. It's not a, it's, it's not an insult to say it. Like it's not a, the, it's not a dig. The, I mean, I love the PS5 love and the, the Xbox Series X at this point in their life, like would have already been replaced in prior generations. Right. Right. Like they, Xbox, the Xbox 360 was like four years. They're kind of sticking in there just because Moore's law is kind of dead. <laughs> so it, it, yes, it is. Yeah. They're kind it of hanging in dead. there, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, they are they're still, aging they're still fine. They're still yeah, fine. They're, they're fine. Could, the, the mostly set, great experiences yeah. on it. The feature set is I, I, lagging, but that depends on the title, whether that yeah. matters. Right. And a lot of games, they don't use hardware ray tracing like mafia and things like that. So it's, I think it's a lot of the key with, with, talking about this kind of hardware though is fundamentally it's still down to developer decisions these hardware platforms are powerful enough to do whatever developers might want to to some to a to a reasonable degree it comes down to how well optimizing the decisions made developer during development as to whether you get a good experience out of them or not and a lot of developers sometimes ship stuff where they've made some choices that result in not great results